Okay, today is the 19th of September, uh, 2014. We're at the New York State Military Museum in Saratoga Springs, New York. My name is Wayne Clark. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and date and place of birth, please? Lawrence E. Corbett, born in Fort Leverett, New York, on May 11, 1921. Did you attend school in Fort Edward? I did. I graduated from high school in Fort Edward in 1939. Once you graduated, did you go on to uh, college or did you go to work? No, I went. I had to wait a year because my older sister was ahead of me in Milder Valley. Mm -hmm. And in 1940, uh, 1940, I was a freshman at Siena and remained there until I was going to be drafted uh, in the uh, spring of 1942. All right, let me just uh, ask you, uh, do you remember where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? Why, well, yes, I, uh, like everyone else, I guess we had our radios on, mm -hmm. and we remember President Roosevelt uh, uh, with, with his uh, speech announcing the fact that the Japanese had attacked us at Pearl Harbor, and uh, well, how shocked we all were at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, getting your, your draft letter. When was that? In the spring of 42? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, probably, well, the, the, the second draft was in the late March of 1942, mm -hmm. and I got the, ninth, the 13th number called nationally. So the Washington County Draft Board uh, was in touch with me within two to three weeks and had me uh, in the top ten to be drafted mm -hmm. at the next draft. And actually they did have a draft in June but in the meantime, I had gone down to the uh, recruiting center in Albany mm -hmm. and enlisted. And, uh, and I, I, but my actual enlistment didn't begin until I had signed up and was transferred to Newport, Rhode Island. Now let me ask you, why did you pick the Navy? Well, <laughs> well I, uh, I, I can Right now, I probably can't give you an adequate answer to that question for this reason. I, uh, I knew I didn't want to be in the Army. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, we had already had uh, 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 casualties in the village of Fort Earth in the, uh, in, the, in the infantry that were uh, Company K uh, in Clint's Falls, New York, uh, had already uh, suffered. Uh, they had men called up in Clint's Falls, and we already had suffered casualties. Uh, in the, uh, in the local community in World War II. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want any part of being in the infantry. I wanted to be aboard a ship, and that's the reason I have just okay. the name. Okay. <laughs> and you mentioned uh, getting your draft uh, letter and talking to the college dean, yes, and he said that if you went in, you, you'd be credited with a full semester. That's correct. That, that is correct. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. I, and got, I got a full two years of the... Uh, of credit for my, my first two years in Siena. Mm -hmm. And I returned to Siena uh, in, the, in the fall of 1945 uh, after I was uh, separated from the, uh, from the Navy, and, but I, had, I was continuing to be in the, in, in the reserve. Okay, all right, let, let's go back to when you first went into the Navy. Yeah. Now, where did you go for your basic training? Newport, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. where I was uh, in instructors in the in the field of, of uh, navigation. Now what was that like for you? Was that your first time away from home? Well, no, not the first time away from home. Uh, my, my family was a railroad family. My mm -hmm. father was a rules examiner on the Delaware and Hudson Railroad. And uh, between my mother and the, the railroad passes that we had, uh, we, we traveled, uh, we used as a kid growing up, uh, I had many uh, trips uh, with my dad. Uh, he was a rules examiner, uh, and uh, he was like a school teacher uh, mm -hmm. in, in the railroad. And uh, he used to give examinations to the engineers, the firemen, the brakemen, uh, the, uh, the yard masters, and so forth. Okay. And uh, I've been to Rouse's Point, I've been to Saranac Lake, I've been to Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, any number of places. So that, that, Train travel was very common to me and, and my and my family mm -hmm. during my childhood. Okay. Okay. Now your your basic training, 
you mentioned they, they taught you navigation there? Navigation was our primary, uh, uh, that, that was a, uh, very interesting, uh, the, the training for quartermaster, because we, uh, we, we used to do a review of the U.S. Uh, I think geodetic uh, uh, department, where, where they drafted maps and so forth, where they, where they uh, and they would measure very harbors, even in the, in the Pacific, uh, the, the depths of, uh, of the water and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and islands that were going to be invaded. They, uh, they had that information. And uh, unfortunately, uh, when it came to the Tarawa invasion uh, in, in the November of 1943, they hadn't done adequate in, uh, investigation of that island and they were totally unaware of the fact that on uh, twice a year, Terala has less than two or three inches of, of, of tide. And that was the reason that the, 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 the landing barges in Terala invasion got hung up on the, on the coral uh, beaches and on the, the well, coral. The reefs? Uh, uh, coral reefs, rather. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the Marines were slaughtered. It was a terrible, terrible, badly planned invasion. And uh, uh, there's one instance I can recall, and I can't remember the name of the general of the Marines, but I was up on the bridge of the ship at that time, and, uh, and actually the, uh, the conversation between the general of the Marines and the general in charge of the, of the whole invasion came over the loudspeaker system within our, our cockpit of our, our ship. And, and Commander Brown said to me, Mr. Corbett, I don't think you should be hearing this. this, this. Why don't you go up back out onto the wing uh, of the ship? But that, what was going on was the Marine General was calling the Admiral aboard uh, his ship, all kinds of, oh, using the F word, uh, all the first words that he could say. And, uh, my Captain Brown didn't want me hearing that, hearing mm -hmm. but I actually heard that general ball out the admiral aboard the ship that they were getting inadequate bombing on the island and that the, uh, that's why his marines were getting chewed up by the Japanese. It was a, it was a very unusual situation. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let me, uh, let's go back a little bit to uh, your training. Once once you completed your quartermaster school, did you go on to any other training or did you go aboard a ship? No, I went aboard the ship in December, uh, the first week of December of 1942. Mm -hmm. I was assigned to the Bell. And uh, within four days after my being aboard that ship, uh, we, we took off for the South Pacific. Uh, mm -hmm. We stopped in Guadalcanal. Uh, no, uh, in Guadalcanal. Well, not my wife, I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me, that's a mistake. Uh, where the uh, where the terrorists are being held right now in, on that island, Cuba. Uh, oh, Guantanamo. Yeah, Guantanamo Bay. That we were, uh, we our ship had to stop there, and there was a a, a crew of um, uh, carpenters, plumbers, and so forth uh, who were in the navy, and we had we took a, we picked up a shipload. Of, uh, of sailors who were going to be transferred to the South Pacific in order that they could do their building and, and so forth on the islands what they, uh, that could be captured by the So team. were these Seabees? Seabees, that's, exactly, okay. that's exactly what they were. Yes, okay. they were Seabees. Thanks for inviting <laughs> remembering <laughs> Forgive me for my that's lack right. of memory here. And I, it's a, but they, uh, and that, so that we, uh, we went uh, through the Panama Canal down to Nomea, New Caledonia, uh, and uh, a long trip and so forth, a very interesting trip uh, to be in Nomea, which is a French colony at that time. And, uh, and that island was, uh, was uh, not involved in any in Japanese invasions. The, mm -hmm. uh, the French had protected that island, and the Japanese had made no effort to try to uh, capture uh, New Caledonia. And so that we, uh, that was our only mission was to get the Seabees down there. Uh, we had between 800 and 1,000 troops would be aboard our, uh, the, uh, the, the ship. 
and uh, we were returned uh, 180 degrees. We were shipped right back to the uh, Eastern uh, uh, Atlantic, mm -hmm. uh, where we went to New York. Our ship was repainted, and we then made preparation for the invasion of Sicily in mm -hmm. July of 1942. Now you said it was repainted. Was it camouflaged at all? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. And one of those. Where was my picture of the ship? Here's a, uh, here's a picture of the ship. Okay, uh, yep, it, uh, bring it closer to you. Uh -huh. And that, that way it's easier for me to uh, zoom in on it. Uh -huh. Let's see here. Okay, yep, hold, hold, hold it still. Oh yeah, okay, I, I can see the, uh, yeah. let's see the camouflage. Yeah. It was camouflage, yes it was. Okay. And, uh, yeah. But they, uh, in fact, when we got to New York, they, uh, they installed new, uh, new 40 millimeter guns aboard the ship, and so that we were, we were much more heavily armed as a troop transport mm -hmm. than we were uh, on the uh, initial trip down to uh, in, uh, New Caledonia. Mm -hmm. And I think we were tied up in Hunters Point, uh, uh, Hunters Point shipyard in Brooklyn. Now, were you able to get home oh, yes. during that during that time? Yes, I, uh, that's why I took advantage of my father's railroad uh, uh, pass. And I uh, so it, during a period of three or four weeks, when we the ship was in the in the shipyard, uh, I probably got home once or twice. Oh, nice! In Fort Everett. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Once once your ship was fitted, and you took off for. Then, for Europe. Uh, then uh, we took off. Uh, now we went down to the uh, Chesapeake Bay and we trained. Uh, we trained. Uh, uh, they'd uh, have troops, uh, uh, boats um, would go into the shore and land on them. They up in the Chesapeake Bay, they, they trained to, uh, whenever there was rough, good rough water, even in the Chesapeake Bay, uh, troops uh, were for nine or four or five weeks. We were up in Chesapeake Bay training troops to land on the beaches. Okay. Okay. So that we, in July, when we invaded the you know, Sicily, actually the, the landing uh, in Sicily uh, went, was was uh, unopposed by the uh, by the Italians. We uh, the, there was there was uh, the only uh, uh, combat that was involved was the German uh, the German Air Force uh, was very active. They were. They had uh, come down into uh, the, the the boot of, of Italy, and uh, we uh, a bit actually shot down one German bomber uh, mm. in that uh, during that, that invasion. We were there for about eight or ten days uh, after the initial landing. Yep. See, because there would be hundreds of ships. Mm -hmm. our, our convoys going to Europe consisted the zigzag and so forth. And we'd have as many as four columns of ships in this convoy abreast to one another, and probably six to eight ships in line. Mm -hmm. There's many, as many as forty ships sometimes in our convoys on our way to these invasions and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it wasn't a singular thing. It was a, it was a, <laughs> a, a very uh, uh, well involved a good many uh, uh, transport ships. I can't remember the names of all the ships involved in the, in the okay. like the William P. Biddle, but the William P. Biddle, the ship that I was aboard, uh, was one of the first conversion passenger ships that they used, that they converted mm -hmm. for, for troops to be able to uh, occupy them. Okay. Okay. Now, what was, what was your uh, daily routine like, uh, your, your job? What well, when we were particularly... Uh, and uh, uh, when we were, see, at anchor, uh, like in the Admiralty Islands, if we were waiting between some of the invasion sets, so our job as a assemblyman then was to, we had maps, and it was geodetic, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the appropriate word, they, we had maps of the various islands that they were going into. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and for the specific reason of knowing what the depths of the, uh, the uh, what a coral, and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, so that ships would not get hung up. 
-hmm. And they didn't do the next the instruction to do that in a terrible situation. It was a poorly planned operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why so many Marines died. Uh, we trained in Wel Wilmington, New Zealand prior to the invasion of, of Tarawa. And, uh, and we were maybe three to four weeks in, in, in the harbor of Wellington, New Zealand, uh, going up every single day with, uh, because they had, they had some real surf coming down on the north, which would be the northeast uh, shore of New Zealand. And uh, so that the Marines were getting plenty of experience of, and the, and the, the postmen um, uh, on, on board our ships were able to get trained as to how, they, how far they could go in and drop the, uh, the ramp, you know, mm -hmm. so that the troops could rush off on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And they were well trained. And unfortunately, in the situation with Terawa, they, uh, uh, they, they, were, they were 800, 900 feet away from the actual island itself when they, these boats all got hung up on them. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a slaughter. It was terrible. It was just awful. Oh, yeah. Now, were you able to witness any of that from aboard ship? Oh, certainly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could. Yeah, they had these dauntless uh, airplanes were coming down. The, the Air Force had uh, hundreds of airplanes in the air bombing this island, but it was, it was a totally coral island. And we could, we could actually see bombs that, that were not exploded or bouncing in, in the air. So mm -hmm. we, uh, I, in fact, one of my closest friends in Fort Edward, uh, Guy D'Angelico, he was a uh, he was a Marine uh, sergeant, and he was a he was an aide. I forget the title, but he uh, the commanding officer who was in charge on the beach at, at Tarawa. Guy actually survived, and uh, he was an Iron boy. His father had a grocery store in Fort Edward. We graduated from high school together, and mm -hmm. we, we were close. But I never knew until after the war that he was at Tarawa and that he survived the, uh, the invasion and so forth. And uh, he didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. I've met it in hospitals. I, I was in the hospital just in all the uh, uh, hospital. Uh, the VA uh, hospital? Just last year. No, no, I was at St. Peter's for okay. surgery back uh, uh, three years ago. I had a knee operation. And, uh, and my roommate was, turned out to be a veteran of Tarawa. And I tried to get him to talk about it, and he wanted to talk. He refused to talk about Tarawa. He said, uh, I don't want to talk about it, Larry. I, uh, I, I know you, your ship was there, but he said, I was on that beach, and I simply don't want to talk about Tarawa. Mm -hmm. You know, natural reaction. Sure. They, they, they could, you know, they didn't want to re they remember mm -hmm. the one, what, what happened. So, uh, can I tell one funny incident? Oh, sure. Well, sure. during the, when we weren't involved in excellent invasions, uh, we would probably be in anchored in some, some like the Admiralty Islands. There was one group of islands that, that Tarawa was, was a youth, but they were spread apart by maybe three or four hundred miles in distance and so forth. And uh, I had a, a second cousin of mine who would, we, we were very close. He graduated, he was a year older, and he graduated from Gunsmalls High School a year ahead of me. And uh, he, uh, he went down to, uh, 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 let's see, he went to Fordham, and he graduated from Fordham, and immediately went into the Navy. And uh, he became a full lieutenant aboard a destroyer. Well, in one of those islands, in the Admiralty Islands, our I saw a fleet of destroyers come in and anchor, and uh, uh, maybe three, four hundred yards away, and uh, and I used to get the when they did that, I spotted his destroyer. So I uh, I asked maybe the chief signalman uh, up on the on the on the signal bridge if he wouldn't try to contact uh, my my cousin's destroyer, and sure enough he did, and. Uh, so that my, my uh, cousin was able to, the commander, a, a boat that they had, a motorized boat aboard the destroyer, and over he, over he came, and we spent two hours together oh. aboard our ship. I was able to get down to the, <laughs> to the quarter deck and uh, uh, invite him for the permission of the, uh, 
of the officer of the deck uh, to come on board our ship. And we had a wonderful reunion. And about three months after that, he was able to get a leave from his uh, destroyer, and he came home to Glens Falls and got married. Okay. Really? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, he just died here two years ago. Uh -huh. And we were very, very close and, mm -hmm. uh, as cousins, even second cousins. But we, uh, we actually had grown up together, and uh, we, uh, it was just a, uh, a pleasure to know him. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then he did open up about his war experiences and uh, his destroyer, particularly in Okinawa. They had the, the kamikazes that, uh, uh, that attacked their ships in, o in Okinawa were just incredible. And he was lucky to survive. And his mm -hmm. troop destroyer was lucky to survive. And any number of destroyers within his destroyer group were hit, struck by kamikazes and so mm -hmm. forth. They, uh, it was a, it was, uh, Okinawa was a nightmare I mean, for, for the Navy. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, well, the island, of course, we lost on nearly 30,000 troops in, in Okinawa. It was, that was a tough, mm. that was a tough invasion at the end of the war. Now, Tarawa was uh, the worst invasion that you participated and in. That we, and, yes, as far mm. as our, uh, I was involved in five different invasions, and Tarawa was the worst. There was a, Sicily, we had no uh, casualties landing getting them landed on the island, or down onto the beach at Sicily. Mm -hmm. Tarawa was the work. We, there was Kwajalein, uh, was another uh, one of the group of islands that the Japanese had a, a real decent Air Force uh, landing base, so it was a good, it was a good, great spot uh, to, uh, and then I was transferred back to the States to a new ship after that invasion. Now, now, do you recall the date approximately when you were transferred? To it was the in May. I was in May of 1944. Okay. I was transferred back to the United States for assignment to a ship called the USS La Pointe, and uh, I, it was in Astoria, Oregon. The, the ship uh, was put into commission, mm -hmm. and we went down to uh, uh, San Francisco Bay. Uh, where they armed the ship uh, with a 40 millimeters, and we, and, uh, we had some. Uh, now, did you do, uh, did you have the same job or position on oh, yes. on the new ship? Well, by this time I'd advanced uh, by quartermaster, third class, second class, and eventually I became a first class quartermaster mm -hmm. by taking tests and uh, you know uh, doing the things that. Uh, a uh, quartermaster was required to uh, understand and, and perform. Mm -hmm. uh, aboard the uh, appoint ship, a, there was a, uh, a, a, a first class uh, quartermaster who had seniority of me, so I was, I was the number two quartermaster aboard that ship. I was number one. But it was on the, the uh, this, that ship where, and, uh, Four days after the invasion, the communication officer came up on the bridge of uh, the ship, and uh, this was up in in, uh, in Okinawa, and uh, asked me, uh, Corbett, where is Troy, New York? Mm -hmm. And I said, 40 miles from home, sir, why? He said, well, he said, uh, we have orders to transfer you to a place called Brinsler Polytechnic Institute. And uh, I had, for two years, had an application in for officer candidate training, mm -hmm. and I finally, in April of 1945, uh, uh, was able to uh, be accepted for that, and I uh, then attended RPI, and I had to, uh, I, well, I got home, I was, I got home, it was, oh, I'm terrible, I can't remember the name of that island, that uh, the, the ship dropped me off. I had to wait, oh, probably a week or ten days before I, the, uh, the merchant marine ship was a hospital ship. Came into Espiritu Santo. That's a, that was the name. Espiritu mm -hmm. Santo was the island. And uh, uh, I came home aboard a ship uh, that was just loaded with uh, wounded Marines and soldiers and sailors. Uh, we uh, it was it was a kind of a sad trip home. We were 17 days uh, coming back to Seattle. Uh, in fact, we stopped at Hilo in the Hawaiian Islands to drop off uh, some, uh, at a hospital, there were, there were some soldiers or sailors who 
had wounds and things that they, they, they thought if they could get them to the hospital before we got to the States, they could survive. But we had, we had uh, burials aboard that ship, I think, all 17 days that we were took Governor Spirit yeah. Santos to, uh, to Seattle. It was, mm. a, it was a distressing trip home. Mm. So once you got to Seattle, you uh, did you did you travel by train to get back there? I took a train back to uh, mm -hmm. back to Albany, and uh, I, uh, I I think I maybe I had a week or so before uh, I commenced classes, but we had a full semester of RPI in a matter of eight weeks, and we actually had started a second semester. Uh, when the war ended on the 18th, I think 18th or of August. Well, let me just go back uh, a little bit. Where were you when the uh, when the war? Well, actually, where were you? Do you recall the death of uh, President Roosevelt? Where you were at, or no? Okay. And truthfully, I do not recall that. No. Okay. okay. Took our, no. I, I don't have any. Uh, okay. I don't have any specific recollection of that. I just do you don't. Do you remember when the war ended in Europe? Yes, in June of. Uh, I think it was in May, wasn't it? It was in May of uh, 1945. Of okay. Uh, Are you were. No, no, wait a minute. No, in Europe, no. The uh, the armistice. Uh, uh, the end of the war came in August in, uh, of 1945. I'm sure of that. Oh yes, that was the the war with Japan. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. Yes, but in the uh, but the war in, uh, in in Europe ended in June of 45. And it was, uh, of, and it was August in in, in, in Japan okay. where they dropped the the, uh, the atomic bombs and so forth. Okay. That's the best recollection I can. All get. right. Now, now uh, where where were you when you you heard that the uh, war with Japan ended? I was right in Troy. Mm -hmm. I was right in Troy, and I think we uh, the, I think the whole group of us uh, uh, we had a great group because all the uh, there was a group about. 35 or 40 of us who had received the orders to become officers and we were uh, we were we were built in the, uh, the barracks uh, that they had to the uh, where the uh, regular students at RPI mm -hmm. uh, up on the hill and uh, of course we had a, uh, everybody went crazy you know mm -hmm. when the uh, when the war ended and uh, we were we were given plenty of time off and leave and so forth for a couple three days but uh, we, uh, uh, I think, well, I forget my date of separation. Now, uh, so obviously once the, once the war ended with Japan, your classes in OCS resumed. They didn't, they didn't end the OCS. Not for another about two or three weeks. Okay. But, but they, we did continue. I mean, for, but, then, uh, but, but then they were terminated, uh, uh, well, probably, probably Shorter than that, probably within a week or ten days, that the classes were terminated. There was no point of their going any further. Now, was every everybody commissioned at that point? No, no, we didn't get oh. our commission until August. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, 20th of September is actually when, we, when I got my commission, and I'm okay. sure the other members that were in my class okay. must have gotten it at the same time. Where were you when you got your commission? Were you still at RPI? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. No, I, uh, I think actually when, when they terminated the classes, uh, that's when I got shipped to, uh, uh, Oh, you, you, was it Samson they sent you? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. 8th of September, 1945, Samson. So I got shipped from RPI up to Samson, right here. Okay. And, uh, All right. Okay. 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 And that was, uh, and then so that, uh, then I went back to Siena College within another two weeks, uh, and started my, my junior year at, uh, at, uh, at Siena. Oh, right. So I... Uh, now, now you, uh, you made use of the GI Bill for that? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I made... Not only that, but I uh, had got me into law school. I finished, uh, I graduated uh, in, 
1946 from, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not, I two years, I was nine. I graduated from Siena in 1948. I, uh, uh, and then uh, I went to Albany Law School, and then I transferred to New York Law School, where I went through and got my degree in two years, and I became a lawyer in 1952. Mm. And uh, I've only retired as an attorney two years ago. What type of uh, law did you practice? I pri well, I, I had, in Fort Edward, I developed a wonderful practice. Uh, uh, I started from scratch. There were two lawyers in Fort Edward at the time that I, I graduated from law school in uh, 1952. And they, uh, I had, I was single, of course, and I, uh, I had a tough time getting started uh, to make a living. I was, that was a tough couple of years. But once I got going, I, uh, I fit in at Fort Edward. We have four nationalities in the village of Fort Edward. It's, it's, it's not as, uh, Fort Edward today is not like it was when I graduated, when I, when mm -hmm. I started practicing law back in 1952. But the French, the Irish, the Polish, and the Italians were, um, I mixed in very well with them. Mm -hmm. I developed and a, a very substantial law practice, and in both I was doing real property, mortgage work, and uh, I had uh, uh, I, I did a lot of mortgage work for banks. I had one time I was uh, at the peak of my uh, practice. I was handling closings for four different banking institutions here in the Glens Falls. I mean, Farmers Home Administration. Uh, was a government agency I was attorney for, and then Federal Land Bank of Springfield, and Farm Production Credit, uh, and the Glens Falls National Bank and Trust Company mm -hmm. were all clients of mine. And I had a very lucrative, good uh, practice. And uh, then, and 20 years ago, 20 years ago now, I uh, had a chance to join the McPhillips Law Firm in Glens Falls. And uh, because of the volume of work that I had, I needed help. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent 18 years with the McKellis Law Firm in Glens Falls. I retired just here in 2012. Uh -huh. uh, I've had a real wonderful career. Mm -hmm. Now, did you get married along the way? Oh, yes. I got married in 1955 mm -hmm. uh, to a girl from Troy, of all places. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, well, I was down there. In, I didn't meet her until uh, some years after uh, the, uh, the war ended. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were married in 1955. We have three children, mm -hmm. uh, three, two sons and a daughter. Uh, today, my son, my oldest son, is 58. My son John is 56, and our daughter is 53. So, uh, and we have grandchildren, mm -hmm. and uh, we've had. I've well, my wife and I have had. Uh, we're in our 59th year of marriage. Well, God bless you. With, uh, with, uh, in June of uh, uh, 15, we'll be uh, four, excuse me, in June of next year, we'll be uh, 60 years of wow. marriage. So we've, we've, she's hung there with me all the way. And mm. uh, right now she's an invalid. She's, uh, she's had uh, serious uh, injuries uh, from falling. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's, uh, but we're, now we're joining at Presswood Chase, and uh, we like it, and uh, we're doing the best to, to uh, end up our lives there. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, did you stay in contact with anybody you were in the service with? Uh, uh, you yes, mentioned you mentioned the one fellow that uh, well, you had sent the letter to. The uh, uh, you know actually I. Uh, for a few years after the war, there were sailors that I I, I did uh, keep in touch with, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly with the uh, with the reunions, uh, like this uh, Henry uh, Lowenstein, whose name I showed you there. We were very close, and uh, and there were other members of the uh, of the quartermaster crew aboard the the Biddle mm -hmm. that I did keep in touch with for any number of good of years and so forth. And Hank Lowenstein would invariably call me or, or would write me a note and say that so-and-so had passed away. But, uh, but that was a very loyal uh, 
naval group from Kansas City in that area, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they they stuck together, and they they handled the reunions that, that we attended were first class. Mm -hmm. They really were. They uh, they the facilities that the hotels that we had them in uh, were first class. Uh, it was uh, uh, they. They were, they were pros. They, they, mm -hmm. they did an excellent job. Now, now was your captain able to uh, attend any of the reunions? No, no, no. I, not that I recall. Mm -hmm. We had any number of officers that, uh, they, but there was never any of the commanding officers attended the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, reunions that I was able to attend. Mm -hmm. But there were there, there were lieutenant commanders, commanders, and full lieutenants. Uh, any number of them would attend the, uh, the uh, we'd have probably uh, as many as, you know, the first year in San Diego, there was in excess of 200 uh, uh, former, uh, uh, well, it's not assigned to the, to the bill that attended, but we had one up in Massachusetts, up near Gloucester, uh, the second one that we attended. And they had an excellent crowd. In excess of 250 sailors uh, showed up for, for, that, for that reunion. So now, do you know whatever happened to the biddle? Yes, yes. It was. It was. Uh, uh, it was. Well, it's right here in the book. Uh, uh, too bad. Uh, Let's see, page 19. I'm going to look just a second. Struck the naval list on June 5th of 1946, the William P. Bell was turned over to the Marine Commission at Lee Hall, Virginia on July 19, 1946, placed in the reserve fleet in the James River. William P. Bell remained there until she was towed away and was scrapped in 1957. Wow. Uh, William P. Bell earned seven ballast hours for her World War II service. Uh, Although a gallant ship had ended her career, she will always exist in our memories and in our hearts. She has still sailed the high sea. She took us out and she brought us back. Well done. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, now, uh, and it was a pleasure for me to be aboard that ship. It really was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the crew were. Uh, 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 there wasn't any uh, anybody that was impressed with their own importance and so forth. And the, the mm -hmm. officers uh, were. Just tremendous. I, mm -hmm. I have nothing but good things to say about the uh, the officers who were in command of the ships. And the, the second ship I was on, I wasn't on it that long. Uh, the, uh, the USS La Pointe. I uh, I was we, I was assigned to that ship in September of '44, and of course in April of '45, I uh, I got I got transferred back to uh, the United States. Mm -hmm. So that uh, it was only like eight months aboard that ship. Uh, so I, I didn't grow close to any particular officer, or mm -hmm. other than the fact that the general navigation officer, uh, after uh, he told me that uh, he wished me well, mm -hmm. when uh, when I when he told told me that I was had been successful in, in getting reaching the uh, 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 officer candidate school. So I, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, and, uh, James Forstall, Secretary of the Navy at that time, unfortunately, and that, this was in September, he committed suicide in November of 1945. Wow. We don't know what the reason was, but he died in, the, in, in Washington, D.C. But they, uh, I, I treasured that all my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how do you think your time in the service changed or affected your life? Well, I, um, it taught me, you know, between the Navy experience and where I was raised and brought up in Fort Edward, uh, I learned to get along with people. Mm -hmm. I, I've had a great success, uh, particularly in my law practice, because of the fact that I, uh, I, 
Uh, I've enjoyed people all my life. I've made friends easily. And uh, I've, uh, uh, in fact, actually my retirement, I missed it like crazy uh, for the first year. I finally, now that I'm in, well into the second year of retirement, I'm, I've accepted it. And mm -hmm. uh, I have a wife that I have to take care of right now who has some physical disabilities. So I, uh, overall, the, uh, the 38 months that I spent in the United States Navy was certainly uh, instructive for me for the way I conducted myself for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you'd like to uh, touch on that uh, I, we may have missed? Uh, I, I only wish that I had brought that other book with me to show you about that, uh, the fact that I, I did actually be promoted to uh, the Lieutenant JG. And I, I haven't brought it with me to sustain the Oh, uh, you read a letter to me earlier about, uh, it was from the captain after the uh, battle at uh, Tarawa. Tarawa. Do you want to read that? Uh, we'll, we'll get that on uh, yeah. tape. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is a letter from the captain commander, uh, uh, commanding officer of the USS William P. Bell, dated November 25, 1943, to all hands. This is Thanksgiving Day. It is, for most of those now on board, one of the most appropriate Thanksgiving days in their lives. We have completed a most difficult and dangerous assignment under very trying conditions. Not having been scheduled to do our work in any particular order, or in fact, not even have our work defined, and at the same time being called upon to do a tremendous amount of work on call actually required more effort and more strain on the part of all hands than if we had been following a definite plan. I know of no instance where the USS William P. Biddle or any officer or man of the United States William P. Biddle marked, uh, shirked, uh, malingered, or otherwise hesitated, regardless of danger, confusion, or fatigue, and I know all hands gave the job everything they had. As commanding officer, I am grateful to you all. Signed, L. F. Brown, Commander, USNR, Commanding Officer. Uh, we were very impressed with that letter. Mm -hmm. It was uh, uh, it, it was a tough situation. I uh, would you want me to sure that? sure. Uh, the above letter, dated five days after the assault landing on Tarawa, the Gilbert Islands, more than 1,900 Marines were killed within 72 hours. An additional 1,200 Marines were wounded. It was a poorly planned invasion, and the Marines paid an awful price. Twice a year, there is no measurable tide on Tarawa Island. Our landing craft got hung up on coral reefs a thousand feet from the beach. The Marines were sitting ducks for the Japanese. It was a sad commentary on the preparation for a major invasion. And that was, uh, uh, and the general of the Marines, uh, I personally heard him. <laughs> he bitched and complained uh, to the admiral in charge of the whole uh, Invasion. Mm. It was, uh, as if, uh, the captain said to me, Mr. Corbett, I think maybe you shouldn't be hearing this going out onto the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, he was a wonderful man. I'll tell one more story. Sure. About him. This is funny. Uh, in one of the islands that we were were laid up for probably a week or whatever, we there was a room right behind the bridge. It was a, it was a chart room. Or we used to work on the maps and so forth. And uh, uh, on this one particular day, I, I noticed that the, the captain had got into a, a, uh, a small boat that was aboard our ship and went off to probably to confer with other captains and other ships and so forth. So in my leisure, uh, and, and we had some mail delivered to us, my mother had sent me a book to read, and it was written by a man who was a journalist with a, with, a, with a Daily Mirror in New York. Not the Daily News, but the Daily Mirror. 
And it was the funniest book that I could ever think of reading at that time. Okay. And what do I do? But I went in and there was a right off the chart room, behind the bridge, there was a small cell of a room that the captain could go into and lay down and uh, and rest mm -hmm. while you know we're at sea. Well, I took it upon myself to go in and I laid down on the captain's bed. <laughs> And I'm reading, and I'm laughing this, in, in, in my head off. I, I wish I could recall the name of the book, but I, it's, it's, it's escaped me today. I'm talking to you. But anyway, I'm laughing and hooting. And the first thing I know, the door opens up. And who's standing there but the, the, the captain, Captain Brown? Mr. Corbin. Yeah, oh my God, I'm on my, my feet. He said, uh, it's obviously, uh, a humorous book you're reading. I said, well, he says, your punishment is this, Mr. Corbett. He said, for laying on my back. I want to be the first to get that book when you finish it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a true story. Uh -huh. was, that was the type of man that he was. And, and yeah. obviously you gave him the book. <laughs> I did. And, uh, it was, you know, I wish I could remember the name of that book. It was, a, it was, it was, a, it was comical. And it was two stories that this, this, this reporter had in, in, in gotten a curve in his career as a, as a reporter, particularly in Brooklyn, uh, prior to the war. And uh, uh, it was, uh, but that was, uh, that told me more about Captain Brown than anything else. He, uh, he there was no, well, I, you know, I could have been court martialed for crying out loud there, but yeah. Well, he, uh, <laughs> he had a sense of humor and, uh, uh, it was well worth a while. I hope I can help you in doing well, this. Jay. Well, thank you so much uh, for your interview. It's been a real pleasure. Well, I only hope that people who can who can see your tapes when you get done uh, uh, will appreciate it. I, I've enjoyed doing this with you, and I wish that I would come just a little bit better prepared with some oh. material that I that I should have brought. With you me. did an excellent job. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir.